Hello and welcome back to IXL Tutorials. This is Mr. Duffick and today we are continuing on with our perimeter and area uh, on our coordinate plane review uh, and going to the second IXL S6 uh, dealing with coordinate planes. So uh, this IXL is going to be very similar to the one we did before uh, in the sense that they're going to give you a bunch of shapes and you're going to have to find the perimeter and area of those shapes. The only difference, and it's a big difference, between last time and this time is the shapes last time were pretty straightforward. You could count the uh, how long the sides were or how high, the, like the height of the sides or something like that, and then just find the perimeter or area of those shapes. With these problems, the orientation of these shapes is much different. So for instance, this rectangle is kind of laid out diagonally. So we can't just count one, two, three. It doesn't work that way. We can only count uh, like that if we go up and down vertically or if we're going left to right horizontally. But since we're doing all diagonals here, we can't just count because you're not going to get an accurate number. So to the surprise of probably very few of you, the thing you do have to do is use the distance formula. So I'm going to take a copy of this. Okay. So, because remember, we're, we can find the distance between uh, two points, so B and E, for instance, and the distance is going to be the length of that line, right? So our distance formula is D equals the square root of X2 minus X1, all squared, plus Y2 minus Y1, all squared. Okay, now because this is a rectangle, we know that the parallel sides are going to have the same length. So BE and CD are going to be the same. So it's not like we have to use a distance formula for all four sides, but we do have to do it for something like BE and then something for uh, like DE, although we don't have to do it for, uh, for BC. So we're just going to do it twice and that should give us uh, the appropriate dimensions uh, for us to find the area of this rectangle. So I'll start with this side right here with BE. So I'll say the distance between BE is going to equal the square root of, uh, let me write the points on here just for clarity. So B is going to be negative one comma nine, and E is going to be seven comma three. Okay. And we'll say uh, B is our first point and E is going to be our second point. So we'll have negative 1 is x1 and then comma uh, y1 for 9. And then we'll have x2 comma y2 over here. Okay, so x2 we said was going to be 7 minus x1 is going to be uh, minus 1. So a negative 1 there, all squared. Plus y2 is going to be 3 minus y1, which is nine, all squared. Okay, and let us continue. So seven minus a negative one is the same as saying seven plus one, because something minus a negative just cancels out to positive. So seven plus one is eight. So eight, and then squared, plus three minus nine is going to be negative six, and then squared. All right, eight squared or eight times eight is gonna be 64 plus. And then um, what's wonderful about the distance formula is no matter if you have your number end, uh, here end up being positive or negative, it's always gonna end up positive because you're squaring it. So six times six is 36 or negative six times negative six is 36. So uh, the negative doesn't really make a big difference there. So negative six squared is gonna be positive or plus 36, all right. That simplifies to 64 plus 36 is going to be 100. And then the square root of 100 is going to be 10 because taking the square roots of a number is kind of like the opposite of squaring it. Uh, a number times itself is going to equal that number in the square root. So 10 times 10 is 100. So the square root of 100 is 10. Okay. So that means the length here is 10. And that means the length here is 10 as well. Okay. Um, and now we are going to do 
let's do d e because we already have the point for d or for e so we'll just write down the point for d so d looks like it's at negative 2 comma negative 9 so negative 2 oh, nope negative 2 comma negative 9 okay and we already chose uh, x2 and y2 for e so i'll make this x1 y1 so we do x1 comma y1 just for reference okay and i'll start i'll start right here just because we have the room so d equals the square root of um, x2 is going to be seven so seven minus uh, uh, negative two squared plus y2 is going to be three minus uh, negative nine all squared, okay. Okay, so uh, seven minus a negative two, again, the minus a negative cancels out to a plus, so that's gonna be nine squared plus three minus a negative nine is three plus nine, so that's 12, so we have 12 squared. Okay, nine squared is 81, and then 12 squared is 144. So combined, that is going to equal the square root of 225. Okay, now luckily that is a clean number, just like 100. The square root of 225 is just 15, because 15 times 15 is 225. Okay, so the length of this side is then 15, and therefore the other side is also 15. Okay, cool. So now that we have our uh, lengths, we can use base times height of this rectangle, and we will find uh, the area. So area equals base times height. The base we'll say is 10, while the height we'll say is 15. So 10 times 15 is indeed going to be 150 uh, units squared. I'm not gonna put the units there, it's down there. So down here, area equals 150. So we'll come back here, type in 150, and that is correct, okay. Uh, next problem is uh, finding the perimeter of quadrilateral TUVW. Okay, so you're going to follow the same process here. You're going to use the distance formula uh, between uh, two points to find the distance. Now, again, just like with our rectangle, you don't have to find the distance of all four sides. It looks like this quadrilateral has uh, TW and UV as the same length. And then VW and UT as the same length, the parallel sides, the opposite parallel sides. So uh, you only have to find the distance between, again, two different sets of points. And uh, after that, you're just going to add them all together because we're dealing with perimeter. Okay. Once you get a little higher, you're going to experience problems like this, where it asks you to graph the quadrilateral. And then um, down here, it says find the perimeter. So... Uh, you can do this a variety of ways, but what I'll do is I'll open up Desmos again, like this, and I'm going to type in the points. And in order to uh, type in the points in Desmo and then have the lines show up, we're going to actually insert a table here and then type in the points in that table. So we'll go back. The first point is 4, comma, negative 5. So 4, negative 5. The next one is going to be negative 8, negative 10, so negative 8, negative 10. And then we have negative 2, negative 2, negative 2, negative 2. And then we're going to have 10, comma, 3. So we'll have 10, comma, 3. Okay. And then I'm going to put in that first point again, 4, comma, negative 5. That way it's going to tighten up the drawing. Okay. And then I'm going to click on, let's see, I'm going to click on the settings, click on the that thing, and then click on lines. And just like that, we have our shape graphed out. 
Okay, cool. And if you click on the points like this, you'll you'll have the points illustrated, which is nice. Okay, now from here, you're just going to uh, use your distance formula again. So we will do just that. So same deal, it looks like the opposite parallel lines are going to have the uh, same distance, so you just got to do it for two. So we'll do it for um, the, the top side right here, and then we'll do it for the uh, this side over here. So first, we'll come over here, we'll do distance equals the square root of x2 minus x1 all squared plus y2 minus y1 all squared. All right, um, we'll make this x1 comma y1, and then this one x2 comma y2. It doesn't matter what you make one or two, just as long as you're consistent, as in both of the uh, numbers here are gonna be one and both here are two. It doesn't matter which one, okay? So I just chose arbitrarily. So we'll do that, square root. Okay, so x2 is going to be 10 minus x1, which is a negative 2 squared, plus y2 is going to be 3 minus y1, which is negative 2 all squared. All right. 10 minus a negative 2 is 10 plus 2, which is 12 squared, plus 3 minus a negative 2, which is 3 just plus 2, is 5 and squared, all right. 12 squared is 144 plus 25, because five squared, which is going to equal the square root of 169, which again is a clean number, that's going to be 13. Okay, so this length right here is gonna be 13, and this one as well is gonna be 13. All right, and then we're gonna do the same thing, but now for either one of the sides, it doesn't matter which, I'm just gonna choose the one over here. So I'll now make uh, this point down here, x1 comma y1. All right, and then I'll do the distance formula right here. Okay, uh, x2 is going to be 10 minus x1, which is four, all squared plus y2, which is 3, minus y1, which is negative 5, all squared. 10 minus 4 is 6, so 6 squared, plus 3 minus a negative 5 is 3 plus 5, which is just 8, and then squared equals 36 plus 64, something we have seen before. That's going to be the square root of 100, which is just 10. So that is 10 and that is 10. And let's see what this problem is asking for here. This problem is asking for the perimeter, okay? So we have 13 plus 10 plus 13 plus 10. So we'll do 26, uh, 36 and then 46. So perimeter should be 46. You not finish the question, you wanna go back? Oh, we have to graph the quadrilateral. Okay, well, no problem. We can graph that quadrilateral. So we'll do four comma negative five, and then we'll do negative eight comma negative 10. Then we'll do two comma negative two, and we'll do 10 comma three, okay. So that's what the shape is, looks like. And that's what we did on Desmos. I just wanted to illustrate the uh, power of Desmos over there. It's a pretty nice tool. So there we go. All right. And now we submit. And that is going to be correct. Okay. What is the area of this square? Well, this is an easy one. This goes back to the last IXL where everything is either horizontal or vertical. So you can just count. And that's really nice. Okay. Um, and I think... 
unless there is a different kind of problem. No, everything's pretty much here. Um, so that's where I'm going to stop the video. I will make a note, which is sometimes the uh, the numbers don't exactly come out clean. And what I mean by that is, let's go back to our other problem here. Sometimes when you get down to the square root, it'll be square root of some number that does not give you a clean number. So it'll be like the square root of 200 or the square root of 250, which gives you a whole number followed by a decimal or something like that. Um, so don't expect everything to work out perfectly, you know, a clean number with no decimals. Sometimes you'll uh, come up with a square root that is uh, just as I was saying, and don't be surprised by that, okay? Now, maybe that means you made something wrong or did something wrong and you have to check your work. That's great, uh, but don't be surprised if it comes out to a non-clean number. Just make sure, for instance, if you're doing perimeter, you're gonna be adding that number with this number, with that number, with this number. Okay, that is where I'm gonna end the video. Um, stay safe, study hard, and I'll see you for the next IXL tutorial video. Goodbye.